Hello everyone and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I want to check up on our assets from previous versions. So this is going to be dangerous, but we do have the International Space Station from the original version of KSP2 Early Access and then the Moon Base from 0.1.1.0, the first patch. We are currently in the second patch, 0.1.2.0, but certainly there are no guarantees that anything from the previous versions will work here. It is still Early Access and they are entitled to change it radically. So we are gonna check. We are gonna see whether anything is usable still. And first we are going to go with the moon base, which has a special problem being on the surface. And in fact, when we last left it, we had landed a very large rover nearby. And when we tried to drive the rover to it, things exploded. So it wasn't in the best shape to begin with. We're gonna try three methods to approach it. We're gonna try the tracking station. We're gonna try the rover again and then we'll land something at it if the other two methods don't work and so the tracking station first which is the diciest method definitely and uh we'll just go with this so obviously this is an old save um the 2xl was the big sphere and with the nerves so it had landed directly on the nerves maybe not the best thing to use to turn to it looks like the site is in the dark right now but uh, yeah, let's just go control it and see what happens. Well, there's some tra tra crashing trajectories. Um, ooh, that doesn't sound good. I think the sphere is intact. Okay, let's let's time warp. Uh, uh, let me reload the save, and then we'll time warp to daylight, and then see what happens. Okay, now it is in daylight, and we will control it, and we'll see what explodes. It looks like this initially. Uh, uh, it's upside down, and things all hop up. Every, everything sort of hops. This hops too. Uh, it's upside down though. Here, this is better. Everything hops. Uh, but look, look how the nerves sort of act like pogo sticks. <laughs> or they, they, they are better shock absorbers than the actual shock absorbers on the landing gear. Or maybe just landing heavy things on the moon is advisable. Landing light things on the moon sucks. There's serious lag here too. Uh, it pauses every now and again. Ooh, nice. I mean, will we even be able to turn to our rover in order to drive it over here? I don't know. I mean, some of the modules are okay. Some are definitely sunk into the ground. The Mark II parts tend to like to be sunk into the ground, apparently. Hold on. Uh, but there's, there's like a pause very frequently. Maybe it was just settling the physics. I think the fault name 40 is the rover. Okay, let me just keep wiggling the camera to see. Yep, there's still a pause. But this does great. Definitely build all your base modules just like this, with nerves at the bottom. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's still pausing though. Maybe the random destruction causes a glitch. The light tower fell. Um, Val is still alive, but there are fewer and fewer pieces of her actual pod left. This rover is still okay with Tim C in. I don't know what to think about this. I mean, if it's this clipped into the ground, shouldn't it be destroyed? Maybe that's the problem and oh, then I when I turn the camera around it, it's weird. This one also is uh when I turn the camera to the, I can't move the camera anymore. Up, oh, up. Oh. Okay, now I can move the camera. Maybe it was just a pause that prevented me from turning the camera. But technically this has survived pretty well. It's lost all of its baguettes on this side though. Yeah, right? It's got the baguettes on the other side that it landed on. But this side... Um, this is... Fewer parts than it originally had. And another Mark II. The solar truss that had all our solar panels is very much worse for wear. And this is the big rover. Oh, and when we turned to the big rover, I heard other ex uh, uh, things over there hopped again. Look. 
the big rover hops and all that stuff hop hopped again. What I'm gonna try to do is we're gonna try to turn directly to the big rover from the tracking station and see how that does. Well, it's gone all turtle backed again. Okay, so yeah. Let me well obviously horrible destruction. I'm gonna reload the game and try to focus on the rover first and see what happens. Looking inside the save folder, it does seem like it was saving very, very frequently and a fairly large save, 70 megabytes. Not as large as a horribly good glitchy one, but maybe it was just because of the number of pieces though. Because, well, we had a lot of debris strewn quite a lot of the place, so I don't know, but it seems like it's too big a save file. It indicates that there might have been some additional problems. I think this is our rover. Oh, it's still in the dark. Mm. Uh, there's explosions in the background, but I think the rover didn't move at all. Wow, look at that stuff go. Hold on, let's do this in daylight. Okay, here we go. Let me quickly try and reorient with the map view. Oh, that didn't work. Ah, uh, we missed the explosions. I can't actually turn to the map view right now. When I press M, it doesn't go. I can change my view, though. I can't even see the base, though. Oh, though, there it is. really wants to be in orbital view and it does not want to go to map view oh while I'm here why don't I check whether they can let me rename stuff so this will be moon big big moon rover big moon rover not the best name ever but I focused on it okay it's big moon rover now it's, it says Kerbin though which makes me very much afraid. That's not the Big Moon Rover. This was the Big Moon Rover. Okay, that focus, focus game. Big Moon Rover. But maybe it's just the save. Clearly that doesn't work. Uh, so we'll have to check in a new save whether I can rename stuff. I don't recall that being in the change log though, but maybe I missed it. There were a lot of things after all. All right, let's see. It is in daylight this time. Okay, the camera though, it's always in orbital view. That hasn't changed. Why is it always in orbital view when we start? Okay, let's see the explosions. Uh, can we reorient the camera? Okay. Alright. Yeah, they, there they go. But let's drive this around now. So, breaks off. Up. Oh, does it go backwards? Yeah. To go the other way around with it. But it doesn't topple over when we turn to it. Important piece of information. This doesn't topple over and the big sphere on the nerves doesn't topple over. Also, turning to this, we didn't get the lag. Right, the periodic saving lag. I should have dropped the UI to begin with to see the explosions and everything. Oh, there's still stuff coming down. Maybe we'll see some explosions. Oh, oh no, no, I, I, I oh, oh gosh. No! <laughs> we're doing a reverse wheelie. Not what I intended. Not what I intended. Oh, we're on the nuke. I drove it too fast. Oh, okay, I think we've got a result. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, oh, even better, we've got the lag now. Well, I, I say better, worse, but uh, it tells me something. Yeah, see, now, now that we've driven closer to that stuff, now we have lag as it does the save very, very frequently whenever something hits the ground, I guess. 
And it's a big, probably corrupted save. I mean, certainly with stuff clipping into the ground, it's a corrupt to save. It looks like only 1.3 kilometers, though, to get that lag hit. But maybe some pieces are closer to us. I think it's all done, though. Alright, anyway, I'll revert this, and we are going to launch something to land at it. Okay, in fact, I'm going to go really small here. We have the little reliable lander probe of awesomeness and it is built around the little Octo-2 remote guidance unit which only has 0.1 kilonewtons of reaction wheel torque but we hope that that's enough. We've got battery on top, solar panels, a toroidal tank, an Oscar B tank and four ant engines. Remembering that the ant engines in this version are actually pretty good. They've got a vacuum ISP of 330 the Terrier got nerfed. It used to have a much better ISP. Now it only has 335. So we're gonna go with this and see how it works. Uh, it's got... it says... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It, it paused there. Uh, so it's making really bad saves now in this version, apparently. I didn't have these pauses before. But in this version, it's making really big 70 megabyte saves and there's little pauses whenever it saves. So yeah, uh, I'm a little bit curious about the Delta V because let me take this off for a sec. Just with the Oscar B, it's 1,600. And then we add this tutorial tank and the battery and the solar panels are not that heavy. But this thing has 0.2 tons of mephalox. The Oscar B only has 0 0.085. So why is it when I add this... I, I know how the rocket equation works, but it seems like it's a little bit less than it ought to be, doesn't it? I just feel that way, because this basically triples the fuel. Yeah, it's somewhat suspicious. But anyway, that is our little probe, and I'll build a rocket to send it over, and it's not going to be a big rocket. Okay, yep, yeah, definitely don't want to spend too much time on this. We've got Terrier, we've got the Swivel, and this is how it looks. Um, I'm not even gonna rename it. Let's just launch. But staging is obviously the wrong way around. Now this is a existing save from a previous patch, so let's keep that firmly in mind. As everything explodes. Now, um, oh, we've got the camera. Whoa, we get a zoomed out camera. That's bonus. Well, we're really high up for some reason. Okay, let's re do that. All right. Ignition. And launch. Really big fins. Overdoing a lot of things here just to get on with it. All right. Well, we're probably close to Apoapsis bow stage right now. And fairings. Okay, we're in orbit and let's get on to the moon. Uh, no, I don't want to set that as a target. Wait, I thought, I thought in this version when we clicked on it, it would prioritize the bloody moon. <laughs> okay, now, now, now that I complained to the manager, it, uh, decided to do the right thing. Okay. Stop. Oh, uh, yeah, not exactly. Uh, it went too far. I think it always goes too far. Okay, on to the moon. I'm probably waiting in the tracking station for the base to be in daylight, of course. But here we are. It always zooms out quite a lot in this save. Whenever I go from the map view and come back to this, it's really zoomed out. It was like that on the pad, too. I think it's just this save. I guess they must have reset some number regarding that. Okay, there we go. We are in orbit. And let me go to the tracking station and time warp so that we have daylight at the base. Um, remember how they said at one point that they had fixed the whole time warp in the tracking station 
thing when you've been in a vessel and you go to a tracking station and time warp is limited by that vessel, it's unfixed. Uh, but again, that might be just this save. But then again, this save was created in patch 1 when that was supposed to be fixed. And I guess in this save, it's unfixed now. <laughs> I, I don't know how that works, but our time warp restrictions are based on the vessel that we just launched. Great. Mind you, our focus is on the moon base. I mean, you can tell. Yeah, really zoomed out whenever it goes to this vessel. I'll have to create a new save. Well, I've already created new saves, but uh, I'll have to create another new save and try things out. I might have to rebuild my moon base. Probably. But that's not surprising. It's not like I made it super perfect and I'm really crying about losing it or anything. Obviously, I made it haphazardly for a test and fully expected it to explode. So no problems. Uh, let's tilt our orbit. But in fact, we have learned which base modules to send now. Gosh, but the map view, going back from the map view, zooming it out is irritating. But yeah, we know exactly what to do now. We should build everything out of the big spheres and land it on nerve engines. <laughs> we should certainly make everything big. Big things seem more stable. Okay, well, turning with the terrier is too tough with this. So I'm gonna dump the terrier. The terrier is on a crash trajectory right now anyway, we've got negative periapsis, so off it goes. And now the ant engines. We'll start with that. So just to point it out, um, in an old save, a newly created craft can orient itself just fine. It's only an old craft file. If you open an old craft file, those reaction wheels don't seem to work right. They can't orient properly. But if you have a new craft in an old save, which is this, what this is, it can still orient just fine. Which is interesting. Or it might be specific to the parts, and maybe some parts will be different and bad. I don't know. But at, that, at this moment, given what I've seen, that is my assumption because we can clearly maneuver with this, but we weren't able to maneuver with the heavy dropship loading it into a new save. Now, maybe the heavy dropship in this save would work just fine. I don't know. Maybe that's how it is. Now, well, there's everything. As far as I know, it hasn't exploded yet. Okay, getting within two kilometers. Trying to approach slowly so we see if there's any disaster when that happens. Ah, uh, right there. 1.8 kilometers. Something happened. It, it didn't seem like as much as before. Oh, more things. But maybe it's just the exploded bits dropping to the ground though. Ah, uh, the big sphere with the nerve engines toppled. No. Maybe it's just bad perspective. No, it's it's probably toppled. <laughs> no, it's not just that we have a bad sense of perspective. I mean, it's still intact and everything. The lamppost also toppled. Well, that is confusing. The things that we thought were most resilient are now... Oh, no, I don't want you to land on the... I, yeah. Okay, don't land on it. Val's pod has actually tipped over. Um... I can't turn, but um, the reaction wheel isn't powerful enough for me to turn quickly. 
Eek. I'm just gonna let this flop. It's fine. It's just a little... We should have airbags like Luna 9 or something. Make this an egg. Okay, yeah. I wasn't caring too much about this thing surviving. We we're just exploring this approach. And what we see is... Uh, well, I just turned to this via vessel switch and the game is paused mightily. But, okay, no, no new explosions. Lamppost is like this. Bow's pod is like this. The Mark, Mark II thing is still sunk into the ground. But I guess we've got an extra baguette on this one. Right there. Mark II stuff really likes to sink into the ground. Make a note of that. The solar panel ray is great. Well, one solar panel missing, but otherwise great. This tipped over. The rover is going to hop up when we switch to it. And then when we switch to the rover, things explode. And now this is in the nether world. I don't know where this is. I don't know where we are. We're in the in the ground. We're in the ground six kilometers now. I didn't know we could switch to something six kilometers away. Like that. Okay. I think going to the rover did more damage than landing at the base. Landing at the base directly is still the best way to actually switch to the base. I feel. But the base is just a wreck. Basic, uh, basically. Uh... I don't think we can use the moon base anymore. In the new patch, we are going to have to build a new base. But I don't think we should build the base on the moon. We should do stuff elsewhere. I think we've ha we have our conclusion here. Let's check on the ISS from the very first version of KSP2 and see what state it's in. So let's uh, save two patches back. Okay, we are in the tracking station in the ISS save. And... I think Combine 9 is the ISS. Focus. It appears to be in orbit. That's always good. Let's see. Uh, I, I don't even think there's any point trying to rename it, but... I'll, I'll just put ISS without any... Okay, right. Uh, it renamed the wrong thing, right? I tried to rename Combine 9. <laughs> it renamed something else anyway. It renamed the Space Center, didn't it? That's the Space Center icon. Oh gosh. Anyway, control. Uh, I think it's just putting it together. <laughs> A little bit awkward initially, but it seems to be okay. So this is after we put the new uh, Destiny module on. I can tell because the Destiny module here is rotated wrong. The initial one was rotated right, but yeah, this is the save after we did that mission, unfortunately, with the shuttle having issues on the way down. But we can potentially try and continue the station, but is it a good idea? At least it's intact, unlike the moon base. Which go just goes to show, sometimes... In, in Kerbal Space Program, stuff in space is safer. In real life, stuff on the ground is safer. Uh, it's sort of reversed. Stuff in space is very dangerous. But, uh, yeah. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Anyway, so we'll uh, we'll see whether we can continue this, but we have to retest the shuttle again. And the shuttle wasn't exactly in a good state in patch 1, but maybe it's in a better state this patch, because it seems like if you replace fins, the fins don't flop off, or the wing parts don't flop off. And that was a big frustration in the previous patch. So. Uh, we will see. Maybe we can continue shuttle missions. Uh, in which case I will build the shuttle fresh, because obviously old craft files have problems. And building the shuttle fresh, I'll try and make a video of that so that people can follow along and try to build them. Because I thought I did an okay tutorial last time on how to make a shuttle, but I'll try and make it more explicit this time. And then we'll see whether shuttles can work in an old save like this. But I'll also initially build it in a fresh save. So I'll build the shuttle in a fresh save and then bring it into here. And that might not work either. But at least we'll have a fresh shuttle to test. And we'll test it in the fresh save. So that there's no question about whether it's some lingering issue. Anyway, we still have the ISS. Let's look on the bright side. 
and we'll see what we can do with it. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.